boss then? There was this small French young guy sitting in a booth in another building talking about some open source software called the SIP Communicator. Now it's not that small anymore. Emily Vov started with SIP Communicator that grew into Jitsi and headed off into video, created a <coughs> real cool video server I think you're going to speak about. Yeah. And our friend Sal joined Emil and has a new t-shirt. <laughs> Tell us, what's the state of Jitsi? Thanks, Ole. Well, hi everyone. Uh, just before we start, quick show of hands. Who knows what Jitsi is or stands for? Wow. Okay. Well, then I can skip real quick. For the few of you who don't know, it's a collection of software, of open source software that allows us to have uh, scalable and secure uh, multi party video conferences. So the hallmark of this collection of projects is called Jitsi Meet, and this is how it looks like. This is our weekly. Um, our daily stand-up, sorry, where we all, everyone in the team connects and shares what the hell we're doing. Uh, so as you can imagine, connecting like 12 video streams all together has a certain degree of difficulty. And the idea is that we take care of that for you so you don't have to worry about it. And today I'm going to let you know how we achieve this and we're going to see how you can also do it for yourself without having to do everything from scratch. Uh, one important thing that happened is uh, my t-shirt, which is Jitsi joined Atlassian uh, roughly two years ago in 2015, and it got integrated into some of their proprietary products, of our proprietary products now. So one of which, for example, is HipChat, uh, which is a proprietary group chat application, but the video part is done uh, via the same way we do our video conferencing, so via Jitsi Meet. Uh, we also have a company-wide all-hands meeting where all the offices connect together, the founders give some updates, some presentations are shared, uh, so on and so forth. So this integration of Jitsi into Atlassian actually empowered us to basically go a little bit further, uh, scale up better and basically build these things that maybe before we either didn't have the idea to do or necessarily all the tools. Uh, now we have these resources, these needs, and we can do that. And we can do that actually while being a fully open source project, which is a nice thing to keep. Uh, everything is uh, available as open source in the jitsi.org website. We host a bi-weekly um, community conference call where we share like what's the plan, what we're working on, and actually I'm here today to uh, basically tell you a little bit more about this. Uh, but actually it doesn't stop there. So there are other companies, both for-profit and not for-profit, that are using uh, our tools to build the products. Uh, one such company is Hi5. They sell this hardware and software-based uh, video conferencing solution, and they use one of our pieces of software, uh, the Jitsi Video Bridge. The Video Bridge is the entity responsible for routing the video to all participants and being the smart guy in the room which knows what kind of video has to be routed to what person depending on its bandwidth needs um, and so on. Another sort of instance of this is uh, Meet Jitsi is our publicly available uh, instance. So this one you can use to host your meetings, share your desktop. Uh, it's fully functional. Uh, you can use it. It's hosted by us. Uh, and more than that, it has an external API which can be used to embed uh, Meet Jitsi into your own applications without necessarily needing to host the instance yourself if you don't want to do that. Uh, one such case is Rocket Chat, which is uh, an open source uh, group chat application which added video support by embedding Jitsi Meet. So we have this uh, high level API we call the iframe API, which allows you to customize how you want to actually see this uh, multi party video conferencing. You know, the view, the experience, you can change things around, maybe the kind of application you have in mind doesn't necessarily need a large view here and you want to go with just the thumbnails or the film strip as we call it. So you can customize this when you use this embedding API to make your application be, you know, multi-party video conferencing enabled. So what is sort of everything that this thing does? Uh, which you may be aware of some of the things and not some others. So 
Uh, we can do, we can of course do video, uh, but that video can be your desktop, so we can do desktop sharing. Uh, your conferences can be recorded or streamed to YouTube. For instance, this is how we do the company-wide all hands, we stream it to YouTube. So that way you can imagine that maybe uh, in a different scenario you're like, okay, I need a million people to join the room. Well, that might be a bit hard on your Chrome instance. So um, how about you stream it to YouTube and then you can have as many viewers as you want if they don't need to participate, for instance. Or you can watch the recording later as well. Uh, it's fully anonymous as well if you want to, so you don't need to basically sign up or put any data out. You just go for it, use it, and that's it. There's an integrated chat in it. Uh, we can do collaborative document uh, editing with Etherpad. Uh, there's a calendar invitations uh, plugin which I'm going to show you. This basically allows you, if you're using uh, Google Calendar, for instance, uh, you can schedule a meeting and really quickly create a, a Jitsi meeting room so that that's where the meeting would kind of virtually take place. Uh, we can invite other participants by just sharing the URL so you can share it via email or whatever other means. Um, and I left that kind of to well, two important ones for last, let's say. So simulcast is the ability to forward just the specifically relevant video to each participant. So in the image we saw before with 12 people, you can imagine that we cannot handle, like, well, not cannot, but your bandwidth cannot handle uh, 12 to 15, let's say, full HD video streams. So what do we do? Well, it turns out that each participant will send uh, three or two or three different resolutions and we'll just pick the appropriate one to forward to you. So if you are on the large view, then of course we want you in full HD, but if you are in a thumbnail, we can do fine with a much smaller resolution, which takes a lot less CPU, less bandwidth and so on. So we use a combination of techniques here, uh, simulcast a little bit of SVC also to cut down on the frame rates in some cases and also what we call last N which means uh, you don't necessarily need to receive all the participants information because maybe they are not active in the conference so you can basically skip the non-active participants and only get the last N active participants and this way you also save again bandwidth CPU and uh, mobile apps so that's actually where uh, one of the things we're actively working on right now uh, we haven't announced them yet, but they are in the Apple Store and the Play Store. You just have to put the right name in, Jitsi Meet, and you'll get the thing. That way, you can just uh, enter the conference room name here. If you have your own deployment, you can enter a full URL, and it will also work. And you just join the conference and participate via your uh, mobile application. Um, now. Mobile applications are also open source, turns out, just like the other things. So uh, you can go ahead on GitHub, actually, that's where we do all our work in the open, uh, pull request reviews, and so on. And uh, you can either build them yourself if you want to get them from the store. Uh, code is up there. Now you're probably thinking, well, cool story, Saul, but I want to host it myself. So how do I? Uh, so the plan for now is I'm going to start with my destroyed development virtual machine and build it up again so that we have it running and hopefully some of you guys can join the meeting. Uh, so this whole thing requires a number of moving parts, a number of components to have our DCMIT infrastructure. You need a web server, you need an XMPP server. Did I say anything about XMPP? Well, not really, but it turns out it's used internally. Uh, so. We need a, a setup there, but the idea is that we should do this as with as little configuration as possible, so it's more approachable for everyone. So hopefully that's what I'm going to show you with, with any luck. So. Dangerous. Dangerous. <coughs> let's see. So let's do mirroring. And the first thing we need is double check that the thing doesn't work. So all I have on my server is Nginx and some SSL certificates in a folder. Uh, this is my server. Um, there are many, but this one is mine. Um, so I can just stop the install Jitsi Meet and all the dependencies and stuff. This is a Debian. Uh, sorry, this is an Ubuntu uh, system. So we have packages for Debian and Ubuntu. So 
we have to enter some information like on what domain uh, we're hosting this. This will create the necessary configuration so it is reachable uh, via Nginx. Uh, we can opt to create a self-signed certificate but then that uh, gives us the annoying warning in Chrome, so let's not do that. I have my own cert, so let's do that instead. Uh, it's going to ask for it right now, so because I did that, uh, I have the key and the cert on the same place, so we install it. Uh, we should be off to the races. Well, turns out we are. So let's join the room. Let's call it FOSDAM. Uh, can anyone in the room with a laptop join me here? <coughs> Ulen, Iñaki, Jose. Hello. Something went wrong. <laughs> but they are trying to fix it, so it's okay. <laughs> Whoever they are. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> Okay, so we got another fellow Jitsier here which joined and I don't know, another guy doesn't want to show their face. So this is the main uh, Jitsi meet interface. Um, okay, uh, we're going overboard here. Let's see how, how the Wi-Fi holds. So what can we do from here? Well, so if you're collaborating with multiple people, you may want to, you know, take turns and like raise your hand and stuff when you, when you want to do something. Here we can share it to YouTube if we have an API key. We have an embedded chat, like we can choose a nickname here and say boo. Uh, and then, you know, we can have a, a chat real quick here. So it's 12 participants here. <laughs> all right. So this is basically all happening um, on a server in Ireland. It's the forwarding happening. And here, for each participant, we have, uh, we have some information which we can cover on. So we're not receiving him. Uh, you see how we're just receiving a tiny little thumbnail. Uh, 180p, nothing really, nothing really big. So this is happening all in the WebRTC domain. But sometimes you just got to you just gotta go for the PSTN, you know, good old landlines and stuff. So we also have um, a gateway in the past, uh, which is called GASE. It stands for Jitsi Gateway for SEP. And that way we can actually uh, join via SEP. So we need to configure a SIP address. Uh, that is the one uh, which is gonna receive incoming calls. So I have like a SIP address from a French uh, operator of everyone and let's see there's a default room configured so I'm gonna exit this FOSDEM thing and I'm gonna enter my SIP test room so my microphone is back why oh to hell oh can you please not enter this one? Because I'm going to enter with a phone. So in this room, I can just take out my uh, mobile here and use the phone application, which is usually hidden somewhere because you don't need it and stuff. And uh, with any luck, uh, there we go. Boom. So. We are in via the mobile phone in this WebRTC multi-party conference. Uh, if somebody joins, the audio is also a bridge. So everybody, basically, what you guys will do is receive all the audio for every participant, mix it in, so we have it in here. So this way, we can really easily uh, branch out to either all uh, legacy SIP devices, uh, even the PSTN, whatever, uh, and you can use it. It, um, like that I, old IBM ad said, it connects anything to everything. So, uh, that worked, that's cool. So what's next then? What are we working on? Uh, we're working on uh, the PERC, with the PERC uh, IETF working group to have fully end-to-end -end encrypted uh, conference calls. So this is quite tricky. It requires that you use SRTP twice, like you double encrypt. 
Uh, and so far, nobody has it, as in we are working with someone which is doing a modified version of Chrome, and hopefully this makes it, uh, once the standards are stabilized, everyone can use it, we are prototyping this. We're also working on simulcast adaptivity, so uh, basically trying to better adapt to changing uh, network conditions to uh, dynamically change these number of participants you get or different resolutions. Try to be more smart in this, uh, smarter in this department. Uh, we're also working on an optimization for uh, when you're calling one-on-one. -on -one. So when you're just two participants, we'll try to bypass the bridge and basically have a direct connection between us if we can do that without any turn service. If you heard the first talk by uh, Marquis, you'll see that, well, that's not always possible. But if it's possible, we'll go one on one. But then, uh, when a third person joins, we'll go to the bridge so that we'll work together. Uh, and then we're also doing some work in ICE mobility. Uh, basically, if connection changes, we need to survive and, and continue uh, our call without being disrupted by these uh, connection changes. And of course, our uh, mobile operation, uh, applications efforts are also uh, in full swing. So that's all I got. If you got any questions, I'm here now and tomorrow. And that's the Twitter things. Are you going to release the source code to mobile apps? As I said, it's already up. It's already there. You go to the GC Meet uh, repository. And the code is there because the website and the applications share a lot of the code. So just as a fun trivia fact where the web application is, is now gearing towards uh, rewrite in React and the mobile is built with React Native. So we're, we're unifying all in a, in a single direction. Uh, and there's also a document on how to build them if you want to do it yourself. There at the back. Hello. Uh, <coughs> Repeat. Did uh, oh. uh, private uh, deploy of uh, this meet. Yeah. And uh, oh, it has three components. I, I installed manually, not, not mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, it's quite hard to um, upgrade. Uh, I found it hard to upgrade because it doesn't have like, a really good so every, every release. Right. So, if you have used it for, oh, sorry. Okay, I'll repeat the question, which is, um, if we're doing releases because updating manually can be painful, you don't know what to expect. So, I don't disagree with you. Um, right now, the thing is, all of these projects they are somewhat intertwined together as in if you want to implement something it's possible that it touches multiple projects and you need them to work in tandem so we have Jenkins test everything together and tag each repo so if you use the same tag across all the repos that's a working set now that said if you have followed along Jitsimit for a while you probably know that it pretty much didn't change all that much in how it looks it basically keeps on improving so that is the idea it's a little bit of a rolling kind of thing so if we think about doing stable releases, well, what does a stable mean? Because we have to change things all the time because Chrome changes things all the time and Firefox changes things all the time. It, they are moving targets. So we try to adjust and uh, it's a little bit hard to set the point where this thing is ready now because this thing is ready right now. But if we look tomorrow, it may not be because some things have changed. So like with this perk thing is happening right now and it's probably going to evolve uh, a little bit more before it gets there so um, if you look at for instance browser releases and this has to be very close to browsers because those are the main endpoints here uh, they move so damn fast that they don't make releases more like if you're using five older versions of Chrome it's like what are you in prehistoric times uh, so it's a little bit, I understand your pain point, that's why we have uh, these packages that basically do it for you. You have to do it by source, all I can tell you at the moment, because I don't have a better answer, is that you have to see all the tags together. I just deploy a few 
you commit without, and uh, therefore I don't know if this commit introduced any, any issues or not. We have regression tests and everything runs on Jenkins. So what Marquis said actually, it, testing is not built into WebRTC, but you can do it and we do it. So we don't release something that is broken. Like if it's not green on our screen, they are hanging from the office, it doesn't go out. Now, of course, there's always things that are unexpected and we can't test for the unexpected. We're not perfect yet. One more question. <laughs> do you have any plans for the way to support this? Yes, we do, and it's, uh, it should be coming up soon, so I have been personally working a little bit on that, on, on one part of this. Um, I'm hoping to give a talk on these things later in the year, once it's a little bit more ready, but we do have a plan and a working prototype on how to do this for legacy C endpoints that can only do a one-to-one -one video call to have everybody join the conference. We do. Okay. Yeah.